Hello, welcome to Super Return Asia. I'm Sarah Clark, coming to you from the JW Marriott Hotel, and today I'm joined by Dr. Dorothy Kelso, who's the head of Super Return. So your job is obviously overseeing the whole global series. What's the market intelligence telling you about um, the LPs and what the opportunities might be in Asia? We're seeing strong appetite from LPs in Asia, both from developed market LPs and Asian LPs. They're being attracted, first of all, by the strong Asian fundamentals, the growing middle incomes, the uh, large populations, for example, strong economies, while in developed markets, they've got de declining returns and um, high valuations. So it's a push-pull. And for Super Return Asia, just speaking personally, Super Return Asia has had the highest number of LPs we've ever had, about 400. Some of those have proactively approached us to attend. And that is actually quite a nice thing, problem to have. So are you seeing an emergence then of Asian LPs um, as Asia increasingly becomes a source of capital as well as a place or a destination for investment? Absolutely. We've seen for Chinese high net worths approaching us, Japanese pension funds for example, sovereign wealth funds, so a variety of LP types and, and capital opportunities are definitely all coming to Asia. And that follows on to the next question, which markets, well, we, you've kind of covered that, but which markets are the, are the key markets that are offering that? I, I've, from all my discussions, I've, I've had probably about 40 of them, so one on one. We're finding all markets, or most markets are attractive when they've got stable geopolitical situations. So you have obviously the mainstream ones like China, for example, but I've met GPs from Japan, from Korea, from Myanmar, from Mongolia, Vietnam, India. So I think Asia is wide open for business. Would you say um, Asia is a non-risk return market? No market is non-risk, and so no, but LPs just need to do their due diligence on the managers and the market opportunities and come in with their wi eyes wide open. Okay, we, you've mentioned China and obviously that's one of the, the key drivers uh, for investment in Asia. Is What about China's economy and in particular its, it's uh, you know, recent uh, and long-standing volatility, is that a turn-off for investors? So China is one of the largest economies in the world, so absolutely not. LPs are still very keen on it. There are nuances to do with the currency, for example, that they have to look into or be aware of before investing. But yeah, very much you know, top or one of the top destinations for LP interest still in Asia. And we spoke to um, uh, another, a couple of other people who mentioned obviously the frontier kind of um, countries in Asia, and there are a number of uh, countries that are, that are um, on the precipice of kind of breaking into a uh, into th this world. Yeah. I mean, what what are some of the countries that you believe um, are, are in should be included in those um, frontier funds? Well, that's a, that's an interesting one to ask. I wouldn't want to necessarily suggest which ones, but I'll, I'll, you know, some of the ones we're seeing, for example, are Mongolia, I mentioned earlier. Myanmar has come up a bit, um, you know, a bit more stable geopolitical situation now. Um, Vietnam is actually seen as more mainstream. Japan, traditionally quite closed, is seeing a lot of interest from the large PE firms, but we're also seeing a lot of VC growing in Japan. And Japan, of course, also has strong LP capital. You know, it has all those pension funds. It has an aging population. It has negative interest rates. So LPs need to put their money in private equity in order to make positive returns. Okay, looking at um, again tapping into all your market intelligence and all the people you've been meeting, um, what does lie ahead for Asia? I think um, probably uh, two worlds. Possibly there are obviously there is a lot of cash looking at Asia right now. Some of it is coming from the West. So GPs just need to be a bit more careful about high valuations and potentially paying slightly more than they would do. But it is a huge market. Anyone who knows Asia knows it's just huge. So GPs might have to look a bit further for good opportunities, proprietary deal flow, but definitely seems to be the place to be. Dr. Dorothy Kelso, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. You can watch more of these conversations. Just look for the hashtag SRAsia on Twitter. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.